Welcome to season two of Hot Mess with Alex Earl. I can't believe we're in season two and I can't believe that I'm in a little setup right now. I don't think you guys have ever seen my backdrop look so organized. If you're watching this, if you're listening, you're going to see the surprise in a second. But, you know, usually I was podcasting kind of in like a random hotel rooms around the world or I was just in that like ugly red couch in my room, which is now in another part of my apartment and we can't seem to get rid of that couch but I have a new surprise for you guys with this season we have my sister my lovely lovely sister Ashton hey teeny hi am I the special surprise <laughs> <laughs> I feel so special you're the special surprise oh my God, what a treat Wait, did I just turn that off? <laughs> How do I get that back on? I'm a hot mess. So like basically anyone who's listening or I guess just watching this, we're not together right now. Ashton's in New Orleans. I'm in Miami. <laughs> but we decided that we wanted to just bring you guys some sisterly love. This is like a little awkward, but I feel like we'll get used to it. It's I'm used to, like I had so much fun podcasting with you last season like every episode was so yeah. fun but now this just isn't fun anymore <laughs> no this is fun I'm just like <laughs> nervous because now I feel well, like more important like when I was just a guest I was like oh like whatever so what's up with you this week this, I, I'm so excited because everyone's gonna get to sit in our, our like I know. weekly FaceTime calls to this each other this is like why it's perfect we've kind of been like holding off on catching up with each other I think we should start off with going over just our messy moments of the week we're gonna do hot topic each week so we're gonna have a topic that we're gonna discuss first I think we need to do just like some catching up on our messy moments of the week so what's been going on with you this week I've just had like a lot of schoolwork and stuff since getting back from New York and we had the hurricane which my power was out for three days when I came back and it got so hot in here it was disgusting i went to the gynecologist this week mm -hmm. i need to go to the gyno I, really bad well listen to this i had to go and they had to do that thing where they shove that little knob up there and then you can see everything and basically like so i had an ovarian cyst rupture last year which is probably the most painful thing ever i thought it was just like really really bad gas um <laughs> but then it felt like someone was like stabbing me um and they said it was an ovarian cyst that ruptured and I felt this it was a big daddy like I can feel it in me right now it feels like a baseball like uh, when I'm walking I, f I feel it no that freaks so me out I was that like, freaks me out so I thought maybe I could like get ahead of it and I went to the gynecologist and for some reason they put me in like I guess because I had to get an ultrasound but they put me in the pregnancy department which okay, Ms. I'm sitting there like <laughs> <laughs> imagine someone there. saw you in the pregnancy waiting room well no that's what I thought oh because I was like, wait a damn minute. I was like, what if someone thinks I'm in here to like see my child right now? But I was in there and I was about to pass out for some reason. Like I just always get nauseous in doctor's offices. So like, you know, I just think like the bright lights and then I like yeah. was like something's wrong with me and I just like I get like anxious and then I almost pass out. You know how I am, a little yeah. squeamish. I'm little and I'm sitting there just like fighting for my life for no reason. Um, but I was like nauseous for my cyst, I think. Aww, and the then everyone's cyst. coming out with their, <laughs> everyone's coming out with their husbands and they're like ultrasound pictures. And they're like, oh, look at the baby. This is so cute. And then the other mothers are like, this is the best moment of your entire life. And I'm like, these people are sitting here and I'm sweating, holding on to this chair. Like I'm probably ruining their nice moment for them. But That's... I went in and I saw my cyst and Did they said it was her? a big one. So I think honestly it made me feel worse because <laughs> they were like, oh, there's nothing we can do. And then also um, I saw it on the screen. So now I'm just like envisioning this big ball inside of me. And it just is, it's so painful, but basically you just have to kind of wait for it to like go away or it can or, rupture. Yeah, or you have I was going to say, isn't it surgery. just like you wait for it to rupture kind of and like hope it doesn't? Or it can go down. So basically it like fills oh. up, but then when you get your period, it can like it can like go down. How is this the first topic that we're talking about on Hot Mess? I'm so sorry, everyone. We'll, it's okay. We'll move on from my I, ovarian no, cyst. I can talk about my hormones for years. I think my hormones are damaging my hair. Are you experiencing hair loss? Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm experiencing hair loss and I'm experiencing dry, damaged breakage all over my hair. And 
I've never had that. No, before. you're not. Look Alex, at that head of hair. Oh, you don't know how many hair masks and hair oils and thingies I've been putting in my hair because I've been freaking out. What about- do you think I'm doing? All my hair is fake right now. I I did clip in extensions for episode one. Aw, <laughs> you're so cute. Um, you're fine, but like you have a lot of hair this on your head. The, well, that's what I thought at first, and now it's like mm, it's getting bad. Talking about ovarian cysts. So one thing about them is whenever you have to pee, you have to go like kind of right away because it kind of hurts when it's pressing up on it and Mm -hmm. it reminds me of (laughs) when this summer i was driving back from the hamptons to new york city so it's like a i don't know what is that like a two hour drive three hours it's like three three hours yeah i had to pee in a cup you weren't driving right no i was driving myself and i had to pee in a water bottle actually how okay so (laughs) i was doing the acrobatics in the car so basically that's like impressive I was driving (laughs) into the city (laughs) and you know when it gets to the point of the road where there's no more stops or gas stations it's just like a bridge and then Mm -hmm. it's just like it was just traffic it was literally just traffic and I was in the car and I had to pee and I was like oh should I get off and I was like no I'll wait till I get over the bridge and get into Manhattan that was the worst (laughs) mistake of my life because i was like shaking like it wasn't even past the point where it's like i have to pee like i was like sitting there like dripping sweat um so finally i i'm like you know what we can't go to my i was i don't know where i was going but i was like i have to go to a gas station first and pee so i put it in it says like the nearest gas station is 15 minutes away so i was like i don't even Mm -hmm. know if i can make it 15 minutes like i was at the point where i unbuckled my pants and i was sitting in the car like hoisted myself out of the seat i was like i can't do this i can't breathe like the people next to me were probably like what's going on in that car so i get finally to this gas station after 15 minutes and like Mm -hmm. all i was thinking about peeing for like 40 minutes i was like oh my god like i just need to pee right now i get out of this gas station i get out of the car and i run and it was like a little gas station on the side of the road in manhattan and they were like there's no bathroom here and i was like oh my god and like i had already (laughs) you know when you're like prepping that you want you're gonna pee Mm mm-hmm Mm -hmm. so like in my mind like my bladder was like ready to go like I was like it was already dilating and then I (laughs) they told me they told me that I couldn't there was no bathroom and I was like I like I might die right now like I literally thought I was looking at this man I was like I may just piss my pants in front of him so I had to take it to the car and I literally was parked at this gas station. I didn't even get any gas. I just pulled over on the side of the road <laughs> and I had to pee into this cup and there was trucks passing by literally. And I was like, I was on my seat like this, like peeing in the car. <laughs> how do I feel like, how do you always end up in situations like this? I had to go so bad <laughs> and I should have, I should have gone when I first needed to pee. Yeah. Moral of the story is pee when you gotta pee. Uh, I miss you so much. I know. I mean, we just saw each other it's in New all, York, which was so much It's only fun. been like a week. I know. But I need to see you like on the regular. At least we'll have this now. I was just gonna say this is gonna get really dangerous because I totally forgot that there was a camera over Me there recording. And I, and I was like, we're just gonna sit here and talk. But honestly, that's the point. I can't believe you're in your senior year of college. I know. I feel so old. But I'm... How are you? Are you still hating it? I wasn't hating it. Oh my god. Shh. Don't tell my friends. <laughs> no, I wasn't hating well, no, it. No, it's okay I was to talk like, about. I was just like having like a weird adjustment period where I was like not really wanting to do anything and I was like feeling weird. But now I'm having fun and having a great time. Except I had so much work to do this week. What do you week. mean? It's been like two days since you texted me that. Oh, I know. Alex, my mood changes like five (laughs) times a day. Like I will one day wake up and I'm like, I am so depressed. I hate my life. Everything is wrong. Like everything is just horrible. And then the next day I'll be like, I am the happiest person alive. Everything is so amazing. I love my life so much. I'm so grateful for everything. You are like that. Ashton Um, texts me and I don't (laughs) know if I'm getting like super depressed. Ashton, like we like got to keep watching her and like checking in on her or it's like, hey like love my life like i'm a travel fairy festival sometimes i'm like i am literally like i remember points last year i'd be like i am the happiest person in the world i am the happiest i've ever been like this is (laughs) and then two days later i'd be like like, i just want to (laughs) cry is it kind of weird being 
in your senior year of college and then you're also going to like new york fashion week i don't think it's weird i'm just like living my best life you not know? weird but i guess maybe that was the wrong word but it's a lot to balance mm-hmm. but you're doing it so gracefully so what else has been going on with you i well i found out that someone i was friends with um well they don't know that i'm not friends with them anymore but i'm not friends with them anymore <laughs> Um, I was informed that they were talking shit about me and not even talking shit, but like, I guess lies, you know, I was just like, well, Mm -hmm. none of this is true. So that can't be good. (laughs) Um, and I just heard kind of all this crazy stuff and normal me, normal Alex would make this a full podcast episode and I would have text (laughs) I literally like drafted out a text I was like okay I've heard what you've said about me behind my back don't expect me to ever reach out to you again and I was like I'm just gonna send that Mm -hmm. and like unfollow her and like bye because that's just how I am (laughs) but then I was Mm -hmm. like what would Ashton do she would probably like be a little bit more poised and calm so now this girl thinks that we're friends and she doesn't even know that we're not friends because I'm not her fr- her friend anymore, but she doesn't know. And I feel like I'm being Ashton. Like she has no idea. That is like such a situation I've been in so many times because I just like avoid conflict at all costs. I know. And I'm but always the one to just fight, fight. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I feel like that's your fault because like when our parents were like getting divorced and stuff, you would always just like not tell me anything and then like well i fight for ashton with them. yeah you, know, you would always fight for me even in the high school you would do it yeah you would, like yell at all these girls and i was like no it's fine like <laughs> you no know. i just i just like, i'm like i, I don't want to know i love a little tussle but i don't think i think i'm all tussled out like i don't think i can do it right now but this does bring us <laughs> to our hot topic of the week which is our parents getting divorced <laughs> <laughs> on season one i got to talk about like a lot of my a lot of my life and things I've struggled with and obviously our parents being divorced is like a big thing in my life but I never talked about it because mm-hmm. I kind of I don't know I feel like I needed my other half to talk about it because we just I feel like we went through everything Aww. together I know you're so, so cute you just call me your other half <laughs> okay but you know what I mean you know what I mean but like (laughs) I I just feel like it's better from both of our perspectives if we tell Mm -hmm. this story so hot topic of the week is our parents being divorced it's not fun well actually we have fun now but I think we need to it can be fun we need to go back and like set the scene of what went down and we were young I was in third grade we were really young in first grade yeah I guess, yeah, I don't... But do you remember remember. when mom and dad told us they were first getting divorced? Like, kind of, but, like, not really. I feel like you remember it way more than I do. Really? You don't remember, like, sitting around the table and they were like, so, you know, like, dad's gonna move out for a few weeks and we're just gonna, like, see how this goes. You don't remember that? Yeah. And then I don't I, I remember that. I literally remember both of us just like hysterically <laughs> just crying. Sob- I, I remember just sobbing for hours. I had no idea what was going on. I was just crying. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> yeah. Like I was kind of clueless at the time. Just to, like what life was. I was a little bit more in the but, know. I was a little bit more in the mm-hmm. know than Ashton. Because I would but like. But you would like wouldn't let me in the know. I would hear. You would like not d- tell me anything. <laughs> I would hear mom and dad fighting and I would I specifically remember like creeping at the top of the stairs and it would always be like after dinner like cleaning the dishes mm-hmm. and I would sit at the top of the stairs like a lurker and I was like what's going on down there. Um, so I knew but I never no. wanted Ashton to know because I didn't know much, but I knew that it made me feel upset when I heard them yelling at each other. So I would like go in Ashton's room and be like, let's play a game or like, let's do something. Aww. So Ashton like You're never such a knew. a big sister. I, that's why anything. I'm so like clueless and dumb and like naive about everything in life <laughs> because like. Okay, you can't blame you just all of hit that. everything for me. <laughs> you can't blame all of your dumb cluelessness <laughs> on this. No, but that's actually like so sweet that you would do that for me. Like, you know. I know. I was so thoughtful for big you. Sister after this they told us that like dad was moving out for a few they were like we're just gonna see how it, it goes mm-hmm. of dad living yeah, in another right. house so we were in a little bit of a gray area because i was like oh mm-hmm. so dad's coming back possibly and like i feel like it was like the parent trap i was like obviously we can get them back together <laughs> like this is so easy this is such an easy fix so my dad moves out and 
Mm-hmm. We thought that maybe we could like get them back together because we were a little unclear. They kind of uh, were like, well, dad's going to try living separately from us. And that was just their nice way of sugarcoating it, which like I'm not really mm-hmm. sure if sugarcoating it is the best way to go when it comes to this stuff. Dad moved into one of his like a million houses that he lived in. And <laughs> what was I just remember that the one good thing about going to dad's house was that we could get sugary snacks. Dad had the Lucky Charms, the Fruity Pebbles. The Cocoa Pebbles were my fave. Cocoa Pebbles. Um, mm -hmm. Like it was heaven. And I remember it was almost like, I don't know, like it was kind of scary. Like I remember going to dad's house and sitting on the floor and just like going through the Lucky Charms. And like, I think it was like our first like sugar rush of our life. (laughs) I was like, do you remember the tubs of cookie dough he would have in the fridge? We'd always just eat all the cookie dough. Yeah, the only way basically that our dad was like, hey, like, it's okay that we're getting like, divorced us over. was we were just going to eat all the junk food in the world. And like, we were just happy. He was like, here, here's a roll of cookie dough. Do you remember dad's like Brielle house? I feel like he was in that house for like the longest before the house he's in now. The one that was like on the water and like with the jet skis and we'd always go to Treasure Island on like the canoes and stuff. Yeah, that was probably one of dad's best house, but... That's also where things... That's, like, where, like, everything happened. I feel like where we met, like, Ashley. Remember, like, her dogs and everything? Ashley is our stepmom. The first time we met her was we came over to my dad's house and my dad had gotten us tickets to go to a Kesha concert (laughs) because I was obsessed with Kesha. So... Uh, we go over to my dad's house ashley was in there and i remember like wait no this story actually like makes me feel so bad like we were just i I think about this a lot i think maybe at this time we were in like fifth grade ish we were still pretty young yeah so we we were still pretty young we we had heard about like dad's girlfriend ashley but we had never seen her we had never met her like her dogs would be at dad's house and dad was like oh i'm just watching them because she's out of town but like they were fully dating we just never really got to a point where we were being introduced to her yet so we go to my dad's house and we walked in the door and i remember just seeing her and like we were both ashton i feel like was kind of just following my lead but we were like on Mm -hmm. the same page of i was like well i'm not talking to her like i'm not talking so my dad was like hi this is ashley like say hi and i literally think we would literally were like just (laughs) i I was just following i remember i was like i didn't know what to do so i was like alex isn't alex literally was like dead staring like death staring her actually and not saying a word so i was like (laughs) I'm not going to say anything, obviously. Like, that's crazy if Alex is in. We were little kids, and, like, we didn't want to meet anyone. Like, I didn't want my dad to ever be (laughs) dating anyone else ever. So I was just like, I'm not not open to this. This is not happening for Mm me. So she was there, and we completely just, like, ignored her to her face. And this this next part... so bad. No, this next part really breaks my heart because... Oh, geez. So... And then oh. after we were like not really saying hi, Ashley was like, well, like I got you girls something because she was trying to like win us over. She was trying to be nice, yeah. like, you know, shower us with gifts. And mm-hmm. she was like, why don't you come on in here? Like I have something to show you. So <laughs> we walk into my dad's room, my dad, Ashton, Ashley, me, we go mm-hmm. in there. <laughs> you would have thought that this was a tart influencer trip it was this bedroom was decked out in claire's the makeup. bed was like covered with like all claire's accessories no, and we makeup had like, and, like i think she got the entire store of claire's and laid it out on this bed no, for us she did it was like glitter eyes do you remember like those like fishnet like arm oh my gosh like, yes and like if mitten uh, claire's was the shit like that was the coolest oh, store ever claire's was cool so i loved claire's at the time so like I'm, this was cool no i'm walking in and i'm like fuck i'm like she's really good i was like she's <laughs> really good i was looking at this bed and i was like i do want to take all of these presents right now and i was like i was like these would like these fishnet hands would be good for the kesha mm-hmm. concert like mm-hmm. they had those cool journals no and that's what they said the that was phones. like the whole thing she was like i got you like all these like accessories and stuff like if you want to wear them to the kesha concert like all this stuff like so sweet and no. nice and then dad was like what it gets worse because i remember dad no. we, i remember at this point we still were dead face i was like i will not budge. Uh, yeah i will not crack oh, a that smile was like, and my dad so goes so awkward my dad was like say thank you and we were like 
thank you and then we turned and walked around so but you know what i do know i don't know at which point we took the makeup but i do know we took it maybe it just wasn't in front of her face because i do remember getting ready for the cash <laughs> i remember and- wearing it all using it. <laughs> we had like a me and ashton no. we had a little room we remember the- my side was pink and yours was purple <gasps> That room was awesome. That was the coolest room And we had like the matching trundle beds, but they were like mixed match. It was like Mary Kate and Ashley matching. So at this point, we reject the gifts from Ashley. We said nothing to her besides, I think like a thank you. That was like definitely so angsty. And then we went mm-hmm. in our room. We had bean bags uh, aside our bed. And I, I remember, remember sitting on the bean I remember bags. We, were, we were sitting on the bean bags and like we were just like kind of both upset. And I think we both like wanted to cry but like no oh yeah. why am i gonna cry i remember right like now? being really upset like no, i was just like was- i was just like i don't like this like i, I don't want dad mm-hmm. to like have a new girlfriend yeah. so we were just kind of sitting there together and then i don't know at which point we like went back and stole the claire's makeup and got ready for the concert but we're smearing yeah. on that glitter whatever then oh, my dad mean, like, was like clip in hair extensions yes <laughs> and then my dad was like okay guys so you know like actually for the kesha concert like i got four tickets so like ashley could come with us and i we said no uh, no <laughs> like we literally were I like, like actually mm, no we were like no she can't like obviously dad didn't want to just t- randomly take us to kesha like hey, obviously he thought this that. was gonna be a no yeah dad dad no, but like, thought he thought this kesha- was gonna be like a great bonding experience yeah. the only like reason we got to Ashley. go to kesha was because dad was like okay th- this is something they want to do we can bring ashley like this can be like our mm-hmm. first like mingling together yeah so my dad takes us to this kesha concert i literally say like ashley can't come which was it was nice that he gave us the choice i guess yeah i think it was nice that like they like yeah. agreed and he wasn't like no yeah. like she's coming yeah so then but. my dad got stuck <laughs> taking us to a kesha concert which by the way i think it was lmfa so inappropriate <laughs> it was so inappropriate and we were young i at just this remember time. her like having sex with like a meat skull on stage and i was yes. like yes and dad was like what is this and i was like i don't know <laughs> you're like alex picked it <laughs> i'm like of course alex picked it no but lmfao opened and i remember like they we oh were like God. pretty close up these were like good tickets my mm-hmm. they were spraying beer on like the first few rows and i remember being like ah. <laughs> and i was you're- i was loving it a uh, little alex no i remember being like I was just like embarrassed the whole time because we were with dad. So like, I didn't want to like act like I was having fun. Yeah, I don't, we definitely like like, didn't dance, but whatever. No, we stood there. (laughs) Well, it's like embarrassing to dance in front of your dad when you're little. I was like, I can dance right now. But like, I was enjoying what I was seeing with my eyes. And so, yeah, Ashley didn't get to come (laughs) to the concert. But (laughs) then, you know, Ashley would start to like come around a little more, but like, Mm -hmm. There was also remnants of her in the house. Like, all of a sudden, like, I would Mm -hmm. see some girls' clothes in Dad's closet. And I was like, hey, like, what's these girls' clothes doing here? And Dad was like, oh, she must have left them. And then the next week, You were always, like, snooping, though. You were always looking to find something. Oh, I was a snooper. And You would, like, go in, like, locked rooms and, like, locked drawers somehow. I would go through the the safes. I was, like, I was hacking and entering everything that I could. You were always on a mission you wanted (laughs) to find shit you didn't know what you were gonna find but you were like i'm gonna find something no unfortunately i've gone through everyone's personal belongings and (laughs) it's just it's what i was doing but (laughs) what else are you supposed to do when you're little like i was a spy so then (laughs) as as there's more belongings coming over to my dad's house of this woman that i was like i'm uh, we're not accepting um so this house was on the water like you said it had the jet skis Mm -hmm. it was you know there was like a lot of outdoor activities and you know those like water shoes the water shoes oh my god the water shoes no this the water shoes Ah! like i don't even know what they look like they're like really ugly little they're like little like wetsuit socks yeah you the wetsuit socks you put on your feet and it's basically so like you don't get all the gross seaweed on your feet Mm -hmm. but all of a sudden there's our two little pairs there's dad's pairs and then there's a woman's pair mm, hell mm, mm. no bitch uh-uh not in our house <laughs> so i see this woman's <laughs> pair 
of wet shoes and i was like this this isn't Wait, happening this was like, like she can leave her shit century. here but like she can't also have she cannot partake in our water activities <laughs> <laughs> when we're not around me being the mischievous gal that i was i took matters into my own hands and i said you know what she wants to have these boat shoes here i'm gonna ruin them so i remember <laughs> i'm gonna ruin them <laughs> <laughs> i remember going into the bathroom taking like a fresh tube of like crest toothpaste and mm -hmm. i i was there i remember i squirted the toothpaste all in these water shoes <sighs> so it's like you couldn't even tell unless you like put your feet in them so mm -hmm. i was like fine like next time she puts these on she's gonna get toothpaste on her feet and <laughs> indeed she did <laughs> honestly we were like so creative with our pranks on her I know. Like, I remember one time we were, like, making chocolate-covered strawberries, and we made, like, a chocolate-covered clove of garlic and handed it to her. And, like, these are Kids things are we laugh funny. about now. So, like, our family, yeah. like, we're literally, like, poor, Ashley's, like, our sister, girl. you know what I mean? But it's, like, <laughs> it's, this is a story we laugh about all the time now, and she tells us because, like, she was dating my dad, and, like, she stuck her feet in these shoes and got toothpaste on them, but she couldn't act like really, really upset because like, mm -hmm. I, you know, like, like she wasn't like part of our family where she could just be like, hey, like, yeah, what are you doing? Like she like, couldn't, she, she didn't have like the authority so to yell like, at us at this point. So like she just had to like soak it up that she had like, like oh. toothpaste all over her shoes. <laughs> and that's no, we one were of, horrible. No, yeah, we weren't the best. But I mean. I guess it, it took builds a while. character. It took a while for us to come around <laughs> because I think that's another thing is so many people see our family online and they're like, you guys are so mm -hmm. close because we have we have my mom, my dad, my stepmom, my mom's boyfriend, we have all the kids. Like we all do everything together, which mm -hmm. is kind of crazy. Like we'll it's do It's like great, but it's not very common in most like divorced families. Yeah, but like Thanksgiving, like this year, like we're we spend it with both oh our mom and our dad and whatever. But that's not that's not how it always was and i don't want people mm -mm. to think that like we just like our parents got divorced and we were like hey like we're a big perfect family because it, took, it was like now. years and years of us fighting years. and hashing it out to like get to this point that we're at and i'm very grateful that we're here if we're keeping up with the timeline here this probably puts us at about like sixth grade and at this point my mom was like i've had enough of new jersey i want to get out of here i want to move to new york city so <laughs> all of a I sudden that we almost did that yeah we're I totally I, forgot we're in i'm in middle school you're in fourth I grade was in fourth grade my mom was like we're gonna move to new york city i remember she got an apartment there we toured schools there mm -hmm. and like we were ready to like up and leave <laughs> no we were like gonna leave i remember we would like take we took all those like private school like tests to like get in and i remember like purposefully failing all of them i was like if i fail all these schools like we can't move to new york and then i was like mom's <laughs> like okay you're going to public school and i was like oh okay <laughs> yeah I, that was like i feel bad because i feel like we like forced mom out of that a little bit because she no like, no all of her friends was... lived there yeah well my mom like just wanted to start over she was like you know what mm -hmm. want to go to a new town a new place which meet like new people. i would too yeah, I would too, but I was like, mom, you're not moving. But I remember it was like to the point, like we were so, we were enrolled in a public school in New York City. Mm -hmm. We had an apartment. We would make schedules with dad about the ferry. So he was like, every Wednesday, like you guys can take the ferry or I'll take the ferry to come see you guys after work. And like, we were barely ever going to see dad. And we were just mm -hmm. like ready to move to New York City. And then we put our house on the market and someone put an offer on the house and then like my mom like last minute like after everything was planned like i remember i told all my friends at school like see you later like i'm moving to new york I know. city like, i was upset yeah and then my I mom was, was like actually we're not going <laughs> at this point we're in sixth grade and Ashley had just gotten pregnant and she had Isabel when I was in sixth grade because I remember leaving class in sixth grade. But the way that we found out that Ashley was first pregnant and my dad and Ashley weren't married yet, but like we like dad would always just drop bombs on us. No, dad is like the worst person at like confrontation or talking about his like emotions or feelings or anything, which is crazy. actually 
he's not bad at confrontation I, it literally was just when it came to like telling us anything he was like scared to tell us things oh he was scared of us <laughs> oh dad are you scared of us no but he was actually the worst with telling us things no. like he would he everything really was at the wrong place the wrong, wrong time well you know it's kind of sad because it's our parents first time at life too yeah but like i think but when like, you're you think that like you want your parents to know the right thing to do all the time but like my dad definitely was a bomb dropper like he was like just driving us to school on a random morning and he'd be like hey no. so like you know last tuesday i got married and we were like what <laughs> no 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 like you're saying that like it's like a joke though like no he actually did this we were he actually did this <laughs> what was like, it? wait we found out that what was the first one? Oh, it was Isabel. I have a girlfriend and she's moving into my house. Oh, I don't remember that one really. But that one was like not that big of a deal. The most traumatizing one <laughs> was Ashley's pregnant. We're just driving with dad one day. I think he got us. Did he take us to get like ice cream or something? Like we're just like no, driving around, no. driving to his house. Dad was taking us to get bikes because dad was like, oh, I'll get them bikes and distract from the fact that like I'm having a child. Yeah, that was like his way of like easing us into things he would like yeah. buy us ice cream or like yeah anytime we bike. were going for ice cream or any sort of treat like we knew something bad something was going was down coming. so we're in the car my dad's like hey i we i don't even think we wanted bikes he was just like hey like you guys want some new bikes <laughs> and we were like yeah uh let's go to the bike store so we're like duh we're driving there and he what was it he did this before he got us we actually never got bikes so <laughs> we pull into the bike star parking lot <laughs> and my dad's like so you know so at this time we're not we haven't been very clear on the timeline here mm -hmm. at this time no. my dad and ashley are dating. dating they're not married yet we were in our angsty era so yeah. dad takes us to the bike store and we pull into the parking lot I remember, I think we were like about to get out of the car and he literally, like, I kid you not, this is what happened. He parks the car, he turns around, he goes, so, uh, Ashley's pregnant. And we literally, I literally, oh, <laughs> no, I don't think I've ever sobbed so much in my life. I remember like we couldn't stop, both of us couldn't stop crying for like hours. Yeah. Like, and it just, the world was ending. Like it's not even that it's sad. It's, it was just such a shock and came out of nowhere. Yeah, that, we like, had we, no idea. I was no like, build up. what's going on right now? And it was like a full like 180 from like the bike yeah. store. My girlfriend's pregnant. And we were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't get bikes. I, just, I think we just went home because we were both like screaming, we like, couldn't stop crying. <laughs> yeah. He should have like gotten uh -huh. us the bikes then told us. Yeah, because <laughs> we were just like, I want to go home. Like, yeah, so we just turned heck? around from the bike store. Um, but that you know, was really funny. It's it's a funny story now. But then she gave birth to Isabel, and we obviously like loved her, and she was perfect. And I think Isabel like made us all closer. Another thing that was kind of a bomb that Dad dropped on us was we were driving to school, and <laughs> at this point, I think I was in eighth grade. My dad was driving us to school in the morning. Our school was like 30 minutes away. And he turns Super around in casual. the car. <laughs> turns around in the car. It's probably like I can, 7 like, a.m. on head. a Thursday morning. He turns around. He's yeah. like, hey, so you know how like Ashley and I took a trip to Paris last week? And we were like, yeah. And he's like, so, you know, like we got married. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we literally. No, and it like sobbing again, obviously. <laughs> I don't know why like his only thought like choice of action about telling us things about ashley or anything in his life was to be driving maybe it was to like avoid eye contact with yes. us he couldn't look <laughs> us in the face so he had yeah. to be driving but it wasn't even like they like went and eloped they fully planned to get married and didn't tell anyone <laughs> <laughs> well they t i think they told people they just didn't tell us which is fine but like it's okay i'm i'm not okay about it well, I wanted they to go to a wedding in Paris. No, I honestly would have loved to go to a wedding in Paris, but I don't think we would have appreciated it. Like dad was like, you guys would have just. No, we probably would have. Like, like imagine, imagine the they're, <laughs> they're having their great wedding and like, it's so beautiful and we're sitting there like. We're like sobbing, sobbing in the crying. Corner. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> we didn't have the best so track true. record <laughs> of making their moments yeah. romantic. He's so. like, can't have these crybabies ruining my day. <laughs> so we didn't get invited to the wedding. 
Oh, no, we just got told about it in the car on the way to school. (laughs) But then at this point, too, mom would start dating around. And Mm -hmm. I was I think with mom's boyfriends, I was just like a hardo. Like they were always scared. You're just like so skeptical of everyone. But it also (laughs) is so awkward when your parent starts dating someone new because you're just like who is this person like obviously like mom has like been hanging out with them like without us and then yes. it like has to be a thing where you have to meet them and like it's, it's just so, so weird. awkward it's so it always weird. just like takes time you know yeah like i like, would just like what it's like just never chill. what are you doing with my mom like you like yeah like hello it's, it like takes who are so you stranger time. It takes so much time to like separate in your mind like your mom and dad together. Like now I don't think of mom and dad together at all. Like mm-hmm. I, like you know yeah. what I mean? Like I don't see them, but like when they're your parents, like you just think of them as like a yeah, pair. Yeah, like my parents. So it's all of a like sudden I see this other guy around my mom, I'm like, and who are you? <laughs> like, like <laughs> get get out of my household. And who are you? And yeah, I remember were- like I was up to no good always. Oh god, you were the worst. You still are. Don't worry. Yeah, I I didn't want to give them the easy route. I was Mm-mm. I was 14 and I was like asking them the hard questions. I was like, "And what are your plans mm-hmm. with my mother?" <laughs> All of mom's boyfriends have always been like, "Ashton, like I'm not scared around you." They're like, "Alex scares me a little bit." And I was like, I, "Yeah, no, she's just like tougher to warm up." Or like, because I'm always just like so nice. I'm like, "Hey, like, how are you? Whatever." No, and then they're I always was, like, "Is Alex like <laughs> mean? Does she like me?" And I'm like, "No, she does." And they're like, "Are you sure?" Like, she's giving me like this mean death stare, and I'm like, "No, like, she's just testing you. She's fine." Well, I was an FBI agent, <laughs> and oh, I yeah. still think Do I would remember- be a good one do you remember that time you caught one of mom's boyfriends like farting or something yes I do actually (laughs) one of (laughs) so you know I was always up to no good I was always spying on every parent's significant I was just spying on everyone actually I think my favorite thing to do when I was little was spy looking for something so one night we were all getting ready to go to dinner it was me Ashton mom and then my mom's boyfriend at the time and he was a new boyfriend so I was like I'm not really sure how I'm feeling about him like we just we have to like we have to see him in his natural habitat you know what I'm saying so Mm -hmm. I got ready for dinner earlier than everyone else and my mom's boyfriend was sitting downstairs all the girls were all upstairs getting ready I snuck downstairs very quietly like this was one of those things where it probably took me like 20 minutes to get down the stairs so like it wouldn't creak or anything like like really like (laughs) I enjoyed like like, what I remember when I was little like I would like go like on the sides of the walls and like look over (laughs) and I enjoyed it like I I loved the thrill of feeling like I was in a spy movie and I went around and there was this area of the like living room that you could see into the kitchen and there was like a little wall. So I was like on the living room couch behind this wall peering into the kitchen to spy on my mom's boyfriend. And I was probably there for like 30 minutes. Um, but I had a big discovery. I a big discovery. <laughs> I was I was literally just watching this man. Like I literally was just looking at him like you're such a creep whatever i was just, just looking like at him I, I wanted to observe like what he was doing when, when no one was around <laughs> and he was sitting there you're like those weird little kids that are just like always lurking in the corner he, he was <laughs> sitting there okay and he lets out the biggest fart ever and i was sitting behind this wall and i was like <gasps> And like, I, I literally was like, oh, I just got some major tea. So I remember when we went to dinner that night, I like called him out. I was like, so like, you just farted in the kitchen. And like, I don't know what I thought I was doing with that one, but you were like the devil. Like, like I can imagine dating someone and like having to have like you as their kid. Like I would not be able to do it. Wait, I'm not that bad. You were. I am when you were a kid I do cause a lot of the problems though when our family has fights but not oh uh uh uh-uh. mm-hmm. wait I retract I retract <laughs> I don't cause the problem no I don't think you should retract that because that's true no no I don't cause the problems you just... I'm just not afraid to speak on them true half the time I'm fighting on your behalf 
I'm just like, hey. Well, I don't want to fight. It's things like I wouldn't even think to pick a fight about. And then you start fighting. And I'm like, oh. Well. Thanks, girl. I'm the protector. I you have my back. The spy kid. Our parents got divorced when we were so young that, like, it's kind of just, like, such a normal part of our lives. But I feel like if our parents were to get divorced now, it would be, like, almost harder, in my opinion. Do you agree? Yeah, I think so. I I mean, I think when, like, you're little, I guess, well, we were only... It's it's so crazy, though, because we were, what, eight at the time? But, like, it's still, like, Mm -hmm. I feel like when someone's, like what's something like traumatic that's happened in your life like it's still like the first thing I bring up and it was so long ago and like Mm -hmm. yeah I don't know like it's it's definitely really daunting but I can imagine like being older because we even got used to like doing holidays how we do holidays I love divorced parents Christmas it's my favorite activity (laughs) divorced parent holidays are like the best thing ever because you get two Christmases you get two Mm -hmm. you get two of everything it's like we would do Christmas at dad's house and then we drive 30 minutes, go to mom's house. We do presents with mom. Like it's honestly All like the holidays again. are pretty fun. The holidays are really fun with divorced parents. Well, it's actually but- also kind of sad because there is a point <laughs> in time that we'll, don't you feel like that it's sad when you're not doing things like as a family anymore? Do you know what I mean? Like you're never going to be like mom, dad and them again. Does that make sense? Yeah, but, like, that's what I was saying. Like, I'm just used to it. Like, that's just, like, yeah. our life. Like, I don't know. Like, I would always... Imagine, like, right now, if our parents were to get divorced, and then, like, you'd have to just, like, be, like, what, my entire life? You were together, and now you get divorced? Yeah, I, c- I could see that being harder, but I think I hated the fact of growing up, like, even in high school and going to like friends houses who I feel like I never had friends that parents were divorced I feel like I was the only one we yeah we were like the only ones like for a while that which I feel like it's more common now but even still like a lot of my friends parents are together so I always craved like a family like a family game night or something I was like ooh, like Mm -hmm. we never get to do those like all together or just things that felt like so family like I always would get so upset about and i don't know I, but i think we it's, can do family game night <laughs> but <laughs> if you no, want. just like cheesy family things i always yeah. was like that's so cool that people i know we'll have mean. that but now we do have it and we have a big a big blended family no we're like really lucky with how our parents were able to like coexist i feel like the way mom handled it she was like really good about it for us in that sense like I feel like she could have been like, oh, I hate your dad. I know so many people now that have divorced parents that like their parents will pit their kids like against each other, against like the other parent and like make them choose sides and make them fight. Like our parents never did that. And they were really, really good about that because I feel like. Yeah, I I think it's like I think what was good with our parents was or I guess which was helpful for us is dad sometimes would like take us for like talks do you remember those Mm -hmm. too he would just kind of sit us down and be like okay like what's upsetting you guys what's working what's not working so I feel like my advice for anyone whose parents are getting divorced is like have those conversations with your parents because like they don't know how you're feeling and that you don't know how they're feeling a lot of the time so it's like hard but I do remember having those conversations it was just so sad like we just we would cry the whole entire time but they were Mm -hmm. helpful and it it was nice to know that like they cared like they were trying their best yeah although we were upset Ugh, you're unlocking like a lot of traumatic memories that I didn't know I had really you don't remember all these things everything I'm talking about Ashley's like not remembering I don't like I don't know I was so young but yeah oh my god that was but you know what it was hard a a memory it did just unlock is thinking (laughs) of this was honestly the holidays just got me thinking of this when you're like going back and forth is Mm -hmm. the one thing about like with divorced parents is your dad's house is gonna have like the absolute bare minimum like I don't think I had any like 
socks bras underwear there i had like one like maybe like baggy shirt for pajamas and like you just like you have like oh my god the overnight bag to dad's you come with your overnight bag but i remember one time specifically going to dad's house it was after dance class so i had like a leotard and tights on and you don't wear underwear with leotard and tights Mm -hmm. And then we, (laughs) it's like, it's awkward going through changes when like you have these divorced parents and there's not like a mom in the household. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I feel like I know where you're going with this story. Do you know where I'm going? But I don't know, but keep going. (laughs) We go to my dad's house and there's nothing. I have my pair of pajamas there. That's all I have. Like I don't don't have underwear to choose from. I, I didn't pack it in my overnight bag. So I'm like, okay, I have my pajamas set. Like whatever. We go down for family dinner. And I had gotten my period and I was still at the age, like, (laughs) I think I must have been like eighth grade maybe during this where it's like, I'm not telling dad I got my period. Like, that's so awkward. And Mm -hmm. I also wasn't going to ask Ashley for a tampon because that's also awkward. Like, it's just you're going through puberty like these (laughs) things are awkward. And I was like, I'm not telling anyone any of this. So I'm like sifting through the drawers in dad's house because I'm bleeding. And I was like, oh, my God, like I need something. And I found like a box of pads. So I was like, "Okay, great. So I stick the pad. Okay, great. (laughs) Great. Um, and I wasn't a pad girl. So I was, I was always like, I went straight to the tampons. So I didn't really know the whole like pad, like how it was working. And <laughs> not that this it's, is like my favorite story ever. Not that it's rocket science, but I didn't really know how the pads were working. So I stuck the <laughs> pad to the pajama pants and I was like, great, fine. We're going down for dinner. So no underwear on the pads sticking to the, like the crotch of the pants. We eat dinner. I go back upstairs whatever i'm sitting in my bed all of a sudden i hear my dad laughing and like the whole family like i'm pretty sure you were a part of this parade ashley's coming mm-hmm, upstairs mm-hmm. i hear everyone come in the room i hear everyone like ha, 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 alex like did you like lose something and i was like what, <laughs> what do they want now like what's going on and i'm like guys what like what are you talking about and my dad my stepmom and my sister come in my room with a pair of and the tong- kids with a pair of tongs oh and the little the little kids and <laughs> they were holding up my pad that dropped out of my pants onto the <laughs> kitchen floor it just fell off the pajama pants um my pad and they brought it into my room and they were like you left this in the kitchen dad was like holding them like with the tongs like walking through the house like this it was disgusting <laughs> <laughs> i know like could you imagine at the point where like you don't even tell your parents that like i i never discussed like yeah I, you my, were like too embarrassed to ask for a tampon dad. like i was too scared to ask for a tampon and my fucking pad fell out on the kitchen floor that's so embarrassing yeah i like remember I like now it's really that. it's really funny now but at the time like i actually was like like i think no, i, I would have like started die. crying no i, I was I like, I uh, like it wasn't it wasn't funny in the moment i was like everyone get out of my room like my face turned purple so yeah it's just Aww. like little things like that <laughs> i honestly f- feel like it has allowed for us to be better at communicating with our parents i think it was good i think it was good for us <laughs> mm-hmm. i think now our family's it, just i know i really think it better. shaped me as a person and I think anyone who's going through their parents getting divorced, I think leaning on your siblings is a really big thing because like Mm -hmm. no one else is going to understand it like your siblings are. Like I just remember it's it's so nice like when we could just like have our moments and like rant and be like, fuck those bitches, you know? I know. (laughs) We just be like, did you see what they said earlier? Like how dare they? (laughs) Like I think not you can like exile your parents a little bit if you're a little mad but like not ex- don't exile your siblings you know because like they yeah, you're going they, through it together you're going through it together and i would say though just communication with your parents is the best like i think mm-hmm. that's because i don't know like what do you think has allowed us to get so close with everyone i definitely communication but i also think i feel like everyone just kind of sucked it up like of course yeah when your family's going through something like that like everyone has something that they're sad or they're pissed off about like everyone has a right to be feeling some type of way mm-hmm. but you have to look you at just it have to look at the 
the bigger picture yeah like, i think that's what we started to do when we got older which was mm-hmm. easy f- easier for us to grasp is like wait we want a family like we want to be able to like we want like everyone happy. at these big life events with us and like be together and like because we wanted everyone there like yeah it's nothing worse when it's like oh like my mom's coming to this so my dad can't come yeah you know so like, i think like our parents really sucked they like it sucked up. it up for us they yeah, they were good examples for us which i'm very grateful mm-hmm. for because i know a lot of parents don't do this but like our parents were really good at like you know what we want they put their problems aside yeah they put their problems aside so i feel like we kind of just like mimicked them at a certain Mm -hmm. point obviously not when we were super young and like just weren't mature enough yet but i think like once we got into high school we kind of were like okay like you guys are doing this and like not creating Mm -hmm. problems so being civil we're we're not gonna do that either and i mean there was at some points where then i think we like would push down our emotions too much which i think in the yeah I think in the recent try to year, like avoid we, we did some family like, therapy oh yeah family therapy <laughs> big fans of that in this household <laughs> every problem we have honestly it was like, like go to the fucking therapist <laughs> yeah. we are big supporters of therapy in the well, rural household it, it is good if you have family therapy because families like you're just gonna it fight. just like forces you to all like talk well it's it also nice to have other. like a moderator you know what i mean it's like mm-hmm. it's almost like god like <laughs> <laughs> they're like okay and elaborate like what that made you feel like no but i'm saying like remember? whatever the therapist says we all have to just like suck up and agree like, we're listen, like okay yeah you yep, can't be like yep. yeah <laughs> so the therapist is like kind of our our role model like hopefully that this episode doesn't cause a family fight i was I'm really hoping <laughs> we didn't say anything bad no we were right? just talking about how bad you were yeah blame it all on me i'll take the heat Mm -hmm. uh well did we miss anything i was gonna say i never want to get married (laughs) because i'm scared of divorce because now i feel like everyone's divorced wait i am also kind of scared of divorce like i'm not scared of it i'm uh, scared like i'm going to be divorced (laughs) yeah no i just feel like at this point it's inevitable like well grandma's divorced mom's divorced I feel like it's mom's like the thing. sister i think four out of the seven and dad's family are divorced well i'm definitely not getting divorced because i well i would rather like wait so so long to get married i think than get divorced yeah hopefully but i mean obviously you don't Which like is wh- you don't get married thinking that you're gonna get divorced but i'm just not you not would <laughs> what? i feel like you always think about like the most cryptic things and like happy scenarios Oh, I always think like in relationships. Yeah, no. But that's why I'm like, I'm just not going to get married. Like if one day there's someone who I'll have an awesome wedding, but like I'm not you don't. I feel like it's kind of silly to plan to get married when you don't have anyone you're going to marry. You know, well, no, Like I feel like if one day I meet someone amazing and I'm so in love with them and I want to marry them, I'll marry them. Well, yeah, you can't get married without someone. But, like, I'm not going to walk around in life being like, when am I going to get married? To who? To oh. when? Oh, I, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? But you want to get married. I would if I Like, ideally, right I would like to get married and have children. But I, w- I don't mm, think I would like get... Like, sometimes that I scares me. Okay. Well, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I don't think I would get... <laughs> I mean, I don't think. I know I wouldn't get married just to, like, be married. Because that's not the Yeah, solution. I think that is crazy. Like, But I think that's what 20- so many people do. Or, like, even... Wait, Ashton, you're going to experience this when you graduate college. Because now all my friends oh my are turning 24. And everyone is, like, freaking people out about, engaged. like... I'm so sick and tired of everyone <gasps> saying to me, so when are you going to get engaged? Like, Wait, when I'm actually like married? already having a panic I'm like, attack. I'm literally <laughs> a child. That is <laughs> terrifying to me. Like, But I swear to God, just... you graduate college and everyone's like, okay, on to marriage, on to babies. I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. Like that, After I'm not college, on that like, wavelength right now. I swear hello? to God. I swear to God. 
like some no. of, some of my friends are like i want to be married by 26 have my kids by 28 whatever oh, no. but i'm like i don't i would never like set a milestone like that because i'm like when it, if yeah. it happens it happens then you're just gonna like end up disappointing yourself or rushing into something but, like, that yeah you i would not want to rush into really something mm-mm, mm-mm. not no, for me no, i'm no. okay mm-mm, i'm okay mm-mm, right mm-mm, now mm-mm. we could marry each other is that illegal <gasps> that would be i don't know if that's legal well if you don't we could live together if you don't find someone to marry then you can marry me and braxton why would i be the one not finding someone to marry (laughs) because that's what you keep saying you're being negative nelly no then i would just live with my friends or maybe i'll live with you and braxton you guys can take care yeah well actually obviously that would some well i don't want to marry you and braxton that would be weird but i would live with you guys you guys can like like, a dog for you or something to marry no i'll be your dog (laughs) you just take care of me all right well we gotta wrap it up Mm. it's it's time for what would alex do i'm what would alex do is not being left in season one that is coming along but i fear that ashton's not we're not involving her in the what would alex do's because no one cares about what ashton would do only what would alex (laughs) do ashton would do it's what alex would do okay no one wants my advice that's for sure love you so much i'll talk to you next week ashton love you uh See you soon. Uh, we miss you already. <laughs> Bye, Pooks Miss Neil. you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay, let's get into what would Alex do. Time for what would Alex do. I'm all cozy now in this chair. I've changed. I'm a little bit more comfortable. I have on my new Hot Mess merch, which is live right now at the link in my bio. We have these slippers on, and I don't think you guys understand. I've had like one pair of slippers that I keep and I always wear because they're just so comfy and I don't really like to change up my slippers, but those other slippers have not left the deep depths of my closet, deep dark depths. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying but because these are really really comfy so Earl girls if you want to be matching with me we have some slippers we have a gray sweat set and let's get into your questions I told my boyfriend it would make me the happiest girl in the world if he got me flowers and he never did I've been waiting four months for them how would you handle this situation <gasps> Okay, this is a good one because I also just love flowers. Like, I just think flowers are the best. They're so romantic. Like, there's just nothing better than getting flowers from a guy. But I I was going to say just be upfront with him and tell him. But if you already told him that you want flowers, like, I don't know. Sometimes guys, honestly, they're just like, they're a little dumb. Sometimes you just have to be like really straight up with them. Like, I want flowers, get me flowers. (laughs) And I know sometimes like you don't want to do it because you don't want to like ask for the flowers because the whole thing that's like fun about them is like the surprise of them. But I feel like if you could really just like, I don't know, maybe you're like scrolling on TikTok or something or send him a thing of like a bouquet and be like, look how pretty these are. Like, I love these type of flowers. Like sometimes you just need to like really let him know and maybe he's waiting for like a special moment so I don't know but I would probably be pretty dramatic and it's like when someone wants to like get engaged and they're like giving hints you know what I mean it's like just kind of have to hint that you want the flowers or just tell him be like the next thing or whenever we do like I'm so excited for you to surprise me with flowers (laughs) thank you so much I feel like that's what I would do I actually think which is crazy because Braxton's so romantic, but I want to say he didn't get me flowers for, I don't know how long, but I remember being like, you know, you've never gotten me flowers, right? And I just said that to him. And then I think like the next time we did something, Braxton showed up with flowers. So sometimes you just have to tell them. Love you. And I hope you get your flowers. Help. I'm engaged and I've been with my fiance for six years. We get married next year. I met a guy that I work with and I'm completely into him. I have more feelings for him than I do my fiance. I obviously have not cheated, but I don't know what to do about these feelings and there's no way out of it spending every day with this other guy. What do I do slash how do I stop my feelings for this guy or do I need to break up with my fiance? I'm panicking. Oh, no. (laughs) Um, Okay. I don't know much about being engaged or getting married. I'm just, I'm not there yet, but I do feel that it can't be a good sign if you are having feelings for someone else. Like that just doesn't, I don't know about it a lot, but I feel like I know that that isn't right. And 
I don't know because this is obviously going to be a lot more complicated than I'm making it seem right now, but it seems to me that you need to not marry this man. I'm so sorry. I don't know. I don't know. But like, I just don't think you're going to be with this person, right? For the rest of your life. And, you know, maybe this isn't the best advice what I'm about to say, but I've heard, this is just what I've heard from people that are married, happy in couples, happy marriage, happy wife, happy life. I've heard that sometimes when you've been with someone, especially like you're saying you've been with this guy for six years, sometimes you need a break and maybe that's not the right thing, but like I've heard of a lot of couples that are like, we were dating for so long. I felt like it wasn't working. We broke up and then they ended up in like a year or so getting back together, getting married. And like some, maybe, maybe that's your case. Like maybe you've never been with another guy or I don't know maybe you're just like kind of craving that because you've only been with this one person but I do have to say that it's definitely not good that you have feelings for another guy like the guy that you're marrying I feel like should (laughs) I think he should be the only person you have feelings for so maybe I would consider I don't think I would consider like going on a break and being like maybe we'll get back together but I would definitely consider ending it. And if you do get back together, that's great. And maybe you just like needed to get something out of your system. I don't know. I also don't know if this is terrible advice, but I feel like I wouldn't go walk down the aisle and get married to someone while having feelings for someone else. So my advice would to be to break off the engagement. I'm so sorry. Love you. (laughs) And I'm wishing you so much luck and let us know what happens. Hey, Alex, I really loved your last episode. One thing I struggle with sometimes is spending too much time on my phone, especially if I'm feeling a bit down. How do you manage this with your career being about social media? And do you have any tips for the girlies who get stuck scrolling? I get stuck scrolling all the time to the point where my boyfriend literally has to take my phone and take it out of my hand because I'm like, I'm not even watching the videos that are on TikTok. I'm just sitting there like in a trance. Like I literally just scroll and like I don't even process what's happening. So I definitely get stuck scrolling too. But what happened so and maybe we'll talk about this um, in a future episode. But I kind of was sharing this on my social media platforms. But I went through at the beginning of September just like a really, really bad mental health spout. My mental health was all over the place. And even when you go back to like the aura reading episode, like I was all over the place then and it kind of just got like worse and worse. And I got into this place where I was so anxious. I couldn't leave my bed. I was having trouble like eating I was like I would try to have like a smoothie just to, like try and like ingest anything and I was so anxious that I couldn't do it so I was in a really bad place and honestly like truly what helped me so much was putting my phone down and like literally touching grass like literally going outside and going for a walk and I mean it sounds like stupid and then they're like go touch grass but it's true because sometimes you get so wrapped up in like what is on your phone or just like who you're following or what's going on on there that you forget that like there is a life outside of social media like there is I don't know like it sometimes it can really take a toll on your mental health and I feel like it's kind of not controversial for me to say but it's like my job is on social media and creating content and I hope that I have like fun content that people can like laugh at and it's not making them like overthink their lives but like sometimes it is a little healthy to put the phone down and go get some fresh air. I think a lot of the times I'll personally get stuck on social media in a sense of like getting wrapped up in other people's opinions about me. And then when I put my phone down and I'm like, okay, I have my friends around me. I have my boyfriend. I have my family. Like all these people know who I am and they love me for who I am. And that just sometimes helps me compartmentalize things a little bit more. So I would say if you're struggling and you need to take a break off of social media. Like that is very, very completely normal. Um, I even took a little bit of a break myself. I was like not posting for like a few days, which sounds crazy, but I'm normally posting like many times a day, but I've tried to just give myself like a break recently and been like, it's okay to not need to like be on there 24 seven. Cause I always feel like I'm letting like you guys down if I'm not posting. But then I was like, you know what? I really need to like for my mental health, like I need to fix my mental health right now and like if I post I post but I can't like get stuck on thinking of like putting out content and just it also just wasn't feeling organic because I wasn't feeling like myself um so it was kind of just like forced and then I would watch these videos and I'm like I don't even look like happy right now like I think 
I don't know what happened. Maybe it's because I started taking a little bit more of my Lexapro, but I got out of my spout and really just like forcing myself to do things that are outside of the phone and social media and going and hanging out with my friends and being active and getting outside. Those things like all really, really helped me. And I think it is important at times to just shut the social media off and go back to it whenever you're ready and in a good headspace. Hi, Alex. So I turned 21 soon and I invited two best friends to the bar next weekend to celebrate with me they both just told me they don't want to go to the bar because they don't like a bar environment that's totally understandable but i feel like they're being selfish since it's my birthday and i'm just asking to go out one night or am i completely selfish for wanting them to come i'm not sure what to say to them what would alex do okay i feel like I do understand a sense of like people not liking the environment of going out um, and not wanting to do it. And there's definitely times where like you're going out for people's birthday and you're like, oh, I don't really want to go out right now. But like it's my friend's birthday. So like we're doing this. I feel like, though, it's not like you're asking them to up and leave their entire life and go move into a bar and camp out there overnight and get really wasted. But like you just want to have your friends around you on your birthday and I don't think that's a lot to ask. I honestly feel like if your friends are like, it's okay for them to not want to go to the bar, but I feel like to the point of them saying, I don't want to go out. Like, I just, I'm like, are these true good friends? Question mark, question mark. Don't hate me. But like, I, I understand them like not wanting to go out because there's definitely been times where I'm like, damn, I don't want to go out right now, but like it's so-and-so's birthday, but you kind of just suck it up because it's your friend's birthday and you go. Like I would never say to them like, oof, like I actually don't want to do that for your birthday. Um, And I think just maybe they are, you guys are just like really, really close. And maybe it's kind of the opposite of what I'm thinking where you you guys aren't close um, and they're not as good of friends. And maybe you're just really, really close and they have no problem being like, hey, bitch, I don't want to go out because I do have friends like that too, where it's just like, you're just so brutally honest about everything. But I think if that is the case and you are really honest and be like, listen, I really, really want to go out. You don't have to stay that late. Like you don't have to drink. But like, this is something I really want to do. I hope you guys can make it and assess from there. But my initial thought is kind of like, come on, friends, suck it up. But I don't know. Love you. (laughs) That's what Alex would do. I will see you guys next Thursday for another episode. I'm really, really excited for our topic next week. We're going to get a little bit more serious and it's something that I've wanted to talk about for a while so I'm really excited for next week's episode and I hope you guys enjoyed with me and Ashley today and our new setup and our new season and I'm really really excited going forward we have a lot of fun stuff planned so don't forget to subscribe and follow this podcast love you guys and I will see you next Thursday bye Wait, did I just turn that off? (laughs) How do I get that back on? I'm a hot mess.